Okay. Hey, hey, Jelly Toast here, back with more great Ace Attorney. We are continuing uh, case four. Hey, Rico, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Thursday. I got the polar bear mount. He's super cute. I kind of wish he could fly, but I will accept him as he is, because he's super cute. Start playing for the save data. Yes, let's go. What you mean? The polar bear mount? He can fly? No, he's only ground. I tried him out yesterday. He's so cute. I already forgot all the voices I made for the new characters. Wait, there was only one new character. Wait, yeah, I forgot all the new voices. Whoopsies. Then you don't have the flying unlocked? Oh, shoot. How do you unlock that? I want to fly around in a polar bear. Uh, it looks as though the police are still here carrying on with their investigation. Perfect. So let's find Inspector Gregson as quickly as possible. Yes. And let's see if he'll take a break from his chips to look at that silver tip Iris gave us for him. How did you even get on the island? What island? The... Swimming? I swam on the island. <laughs> oh wait, it's not that. Uh, I have to present... This thing. I forgot to examine this first. This is a five shilling piece, isn't it? I believe it's called a crown. Yes, and you can train a Scotland Yard detective to do whatever you want with just a single one. I am supposed to be the most powerful ten-year-old in the world. How much is five shillings, by the way? What's it really worth? Hmm, well... It's probably enough to buy all the chips the inspector could possibly eat in a whole month. That's greasy. Gross! And such cute stationery. Tell the gentleman in the black... Whatever he wants to know, trust it will be a problem. I was also... You swam? Yeah! Cause I was just like, ah, jump in the water, swim to the island. <laughs> I do have flying mounts unlocked, like I have the Magitek armor, the dragons. It's just, I don't think the polar bear can fly. Iris' little handwriting is adorable, isn't it? Tell the gentleman in black whatever he wants to know. I trust that won't be a problem. Yes, the handwriting might be adorable, but the message is ominous. There's no room for sentiment there. I'm sure it's simply the way you're interpreting it, Mr. Madohoro. Anyway, I do hope the inspector will tell us what we need to know when he reads it. You don't think it will just make him munch piping hot chips until steam comes out of his ears, do you? Well, that wouldn't be an entirely terrible outcome. Oh, I forgot to present this. What am I doing? Present. Um, Inspector Gregson, do you have a moment? Sorry to say I do. I'm a very busy man. Much too busy to be talking to a pair of foreign gaga- Gagabouts? That's for sure. We have these for you. A present from Miss Iris Wilson. What? For me? From her ladyship? He calls her her, her ladyship? Her ladyship? Give that here. At once! Come on, hand it over, that's for me! Ah, don't wait for me to give it to you, will you? Doo -doo. Doo -doo. Um, what was that coin exactly? It's a silver crown, obviously, but it's a lot more than that. It's, well, it's an appearance fee, that's what it is. Huh? An appearance fee? Oh, I see. You mean... That's right, for the adventures of Herlock Jones. Her ladyship always offers me a little financial reward for featuring me, every time. Yes, yes of course. I know all about your exploits, Inspector. I, re I read them avidly. Wait, you should have flying on- I do have flying unlocked, but the polar bear I don't think is a flying mount, because bears can't fly. I think it's a terrestrial only mount. Of course, her using my name without my say-so does make me the butt of a lot of unpleasant jokes, but still. I am sorry, Inspector. That must be difficult for you. All males can fly? No, they can't. Never you mind that. So, what do you want to know then, eh? Sorry? Happy National Dog Day. Hey, Alex, happy National Dog Day to you. I wish I had a puppy, but I don't. Sad. You know what? Now I'm going to look this up. 
Final Fantasy XIV. Then all mounts fly. Wait, now they are? What? 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 What did that happen? What? Did you look in the air? No. Uh, Yogi, um, laundry and moji? Sam 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 the first number is twi twice. 11... 11... 11... 1148 3369 Here the laundry is 1477 2588 The last number is twice. But the first number is first number is twice. Let's go. Uh, how's your day been? My day has been very good. Thanks for asking. How's your day? Thankfully, I didn't have like too much work today, so I had a pretty easy day. So yeah, I didn't think that all mounts. Hmm. Because um, what you call it? Uh, yeah, I saw like a uh, when I read the mount description for the polar bear, it said it didn't fly, or maybe I read it too fast. I don't know. I'll try jumping on later today to see if it flies. But I want to see how it looks when it flies. Um. Uh, but yeah. Um. I won't read this line because it so it used to be like that. Uh... Well, it's obviously not a problem. Go on, fire away. What do you want to know? Well, if you wouldn't mind, Inspector. We'd very much like to know the address of Mr. Natsume's lodgings. They had designated mounts for ground and flying. Right? That's what I thought. That's why on my mount um, hot keys, I have the magic tech armor and like flying ones because I was like, I'm gonna fly everywhere. What's the point of having land only? They're marked to flying or terrestrial, but now everything just flies because people complained. That's awesome. I'm gonna try flying on my polar bear. Wait, then all the other land mounts I have, if they fly, I could like switch out to those. <gasps> Regal! You just opened my world so much more. Oh my gosh. I could ride different mounts. Every single mount flies. Now that is fantastic news. I'm gonna try flying on my polar bear. Never thought I'd hear that in the sentence. <laughs> the polar bear is so cute though. Ah, the little knife with a mustache Japanese fellow. He lives in a right old hovel. It's just over there. Look. Oh, does he live on Strand Street? On the first floor of that house on the corner where that wreck of a bicycle's propped up. That is nearby indeed. If I remember rightly, the landlord is Mr. John Garadeb. Right, well. If you see her again, you make sure you give her leadership my regards, you hear? I mean it. You tell her that Drexon sends his very best wishes. Don't worry, Inspector. We will. Goodbye for now, then. And long live her ladyship. I set up the mount roulette. Mm. I was looking at all the mounts because I wanted to collect all of them, but then I was some of them I was just like, they're not cute enough, so I didn't want it. <laughs> like the horses, I thought they'd be cool. They don't look that cool. <laughs> well, at least he told us what we wanted to know before he left. Yes, so then, shall we go and see what we can find in Mr. Natsume's lodgings? Definitely. Okay, so we move. Oops, no, 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 no. Back. Like the, um, the wolf mounts look cool. So I definitely want to get at least one wolf mount. What was that mount? Like, it was like a chocolate thing with a little sprout. That thing looks ugly. So I was like, uh, I'm not gonna try to get it. 
The horses don't, but if you get all the horses, you could get a golden horse with wings. I, I mean, I saw that one too, but it still doesn't look cool. So, <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> Whoa, hello. May I help you? Ah, yes. Would this be the residence of Mr. John Garadab? Indeed it would, sir. And who may I say is calling? My name is Dunusuke Naruhoro. I, um... Mr. Naruhoro is representing Mr. Sosaki Nasume. I believe he takes lodgings here. We would very much like to ask him some questions about our clients. One moment, please. I shall convey the message to Mr. Garadub. John Garadub. I don't know what the pun is there. Garadub. Hmm. Did you see that, Mr. Sato? That was a real-life English maid. I know. As I understand it, anyone of standing in English society employs a number of household staff. But that was the first time I've ever seen one in the flesh. Oh, this, this day keeps getting better. It certainly feels like we've really arrived now, doesn't it? We need only to meet a butler and the experience will be complete. Well, I'm not sure if I'd go that far, but I understand the sentiment. Thank you for waiting. Mr. Garadab will see you now. This way. Oh, hello. <laughs> but before I talk to you, I examine all the things. That looks like a Medal of Honor, and it's showcased on a very grand banner. Yes, it's displayed with some pride, I would say. Although it bothers me that it's not straight. <laughs> oh man, I have to think of a voice for him. Oh, what, what what do I do? I'm like running out of voices. <coughs> that old thing. Sorry? Oh, I should be glad to see the back of it. But the general would turn in his grave if I disposed of it. The wall's the best, pe the best place for it. Keeps the belly thing out of my way. So it's just been polished to sign by accident, I suppose. There appears to be an inscription on the medal itself. Look. Let me see. It says, for distinguished participation. Sounds like the kind of honors even I could be in line for. <laughs> well, one doesn't like to blow one's own trumpet, but I was given that for my time in the army. Ew, why? Ew! Don't stir your tea with your pi- Ooh. Can't measure an officer by the number of medals to his name, of course. Common knowledge in military circles. I'll make him sound hoity-toity and posh. That portrait of Mr. Garadub is glaring at me, I swear. Have you noticed that all the little frames contain photographic prints of Mr. Garadub as well? Yes, and... There seems to be a statue of a lion on the mantelpiece as well. Oh yes, seem to come back from the local pawnbroker with that little trinket. Seem to come back? What do you mean? The chap who runs the place is a belly wizard, wanted to sell him something and came out with that thing. In point of fact, now that I think about it, I rather often find myself leaving the place with something I don't need. The lion ornament certainly does seem to surplus re to requirements. Susan doesn't pull her punches, or her throws for that matter. Do, do. Okay, this. Look at that enormous screen! It must have been put there deliberately, surely? Yes, it certainly seems like someone's trying to hide something from you. Who, what could be behind it, I wonder? I'm going to have a very quick look. Just a little peek. Ahem, ahem. Maybe let's not, Miss Susato. I think the maid is going to head us off with a cup of tea. Ahem, ahem. What is that on the ground? Okay, they won't let us examine it. Um... Uh, did I tell you about Eureka yesterday? Yes, you did. How's it going, by the way? That uniform looks fairly ancient, doesn't it? 
It's clearly been well looked after, though. Is that old thing? Pah! Not much better than rags, really. Oh? Wore that ceremonial garb at my retirement bash, you know. But I'm not one for dwelling on the past, me. Would have gladly thrown it out, but you know how it is. Anyway, it doesn't hurt to have the old piece of memorabilia lying around, does it? Oh, I see. Perhaps we should leave the past in the past. Mm. Why do you have a cannon? That's a full-sized cannon! What's it doing in here? Oh my, it's real! I thought it might be a replica! That old thing. Bah, it's little more than a toy. Sorry? The army was selling it off when I retired, so I decided to give it a new home. Never know when the enemy might attack next. Jolly useful to have a cannon about the house. Really? It is, isn't it overkill? Be prepared, I will say. You never know what this twisted world is going to throw at you next, boy. Do you think there may be trouble brewing, Mr. Garadad? Always is. Take Joan here. Never fails to have a clean apron in reserve. Drives them over the barrel, you see. They drive very well with the cannon, though, Joan tells me, which rather proves my point, I feel. It's been reduced to a drying rack, and the one of the huge cannon looks like it's hanging in its head in shame. Books! I notice you have a pile of books here, Mr. Garadev. Do you enjoy reading? Ever experienced a London winter, boy? The nights are long. No better way to pass the time than in front of the fire with a jolly good book. Oh! There's a copy of Rance magazine here, I see. No doubt Mr. Garadev enjoys the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, too. The great detective has a great many followers, it would seem. Okay, so now let's go to the other side. <gasps> Cakes! Uh, did I tell you about the earring I got? No, what earring? Also, at my center. I don't know. Oh, look! What a wonderful collection of cakes lined up on that gleaming silver cake stands. Lined up? Looks more like someone has half demolished them to me. Afternoon tea is a time of indulgence, you know. It's Quite the English way. It is Mr. Garadab's custom to take two cakes with his tea. That sounds delightful. Oh, wait a minute though. There are at least ten cakes on this cake stand. Well, naturally. I will never do to waste the leftovers. So whatever Mr. Garadab doesn't eat, I say to myself, Joan, you shall have to tidy up. How magnanimous of you. Uh, in Eureka, there are super rare items that drop. One of them is an earring. It sells for 23 million gil? <gasps> oh my gosh. Like, what are the stats on that thing? Is it for every single class? Holy crap, that's awesome. If you can't use it, dang, sell it. Damn. That's awesome. 23 million. I never had that much. I've never had more than 1.5 million gil in my hands. <laughs> I'm so poor. Look at this crockery on display here. It's rather unusual, isn't it? Oh my, a genuine London dresser. Isn't it delightful? Although the shelves seem to be broken and the crockery is, oh dear, it's in pieces. It really is. The word cracked wouldn't do that China word justice. Ah, I wonder. Perhaps a cannon was fired at a whoops, I skipped that too fast. Yes, probably something like that. But let's not delve too deeply here. This guy is destitute and poor. He just wants some like action in his life to show that he's important. So I feel like he's like he I feel like he did see someone stabbing the victim, 
but it wasn't Natsume. That's what I think. The window looks out over Briar Road, where the young woman was attacked. Oh yes, I can make out the policeman on the far side of the road investigating the crime scene. Every class can use it? Seriously, what are the stats on that thing that it sells for that much? The glass is rather murky, isn't it? You can't see very clearly. Does this thing open at all, I wonder? I shouldn't underestimate the bitterness of a London winter, sir. Sorry? As soon as you open that window, the tea will freeze in the pot. No Londoner will go opening windows at dusk in the middle of winter, I assure you. Seems very unlikely that these two would have seen anything of the incident, then. Okay, I think I could talk to them now. Or, or wait, I have to examine them to talk to them. Plus three haste? Ooh, nice! I guess if you're just a casual player, though, you don't really care to use it. I guess if you're more PvP, then that's something you would want. Good day to you. John Garadov, at your service. Pleased to meet you, sir. This is Junosuke Naruhodo. He's a defense lawyer. Do excuse me not getting up. Took a shot to the knee a few years back in the Battle of My... Maiwand? Maywand? Maywand? Don't you know? Earned a medal for my pains, but had to withdraw from service. Handed over the reins to the up and comings. So he's a retired soldier. It's a hell of a job getting up and down the stairs now. <coughs> I can tell you. Don't get out as much as you can imagine. Yes, it's quite a climb up here from the second floor, isn't it? I was panting at the top of the stairs. You must really take more exercise, Mr. Naruhodo. Ugh, do you think so? Well, Mr. Garadab, no doubt you were very courageous to earn yourself a medal. Oh, it was nothing. The medal is just a fall roll, really. Wouldn't like to offend the general, though, so I grudgingly displayed it on the wall. Why don't you fetch it down, Joan? Let these good people see it properly. <laughs> Joan fetched- but yeah, before that he said Joan fetched a- Dash it all, woman! Be careful! Oh, dear me! I do beg your pardon, sir! You jolly near took the skin off my hands! I shall be more careful, sir. So anyway, there you have it. Living the quiet life now. Yes, I see. Now then, I hear you want to know about the chap lodging downstairs. Is that right? Yes, we'd be very grateful if you can answer some questions for us. Only too pleased, naturally, especially if it helps to keep the peace here in Blighty. We forged an alliance with the Empire of Japan recently, as I'm sure you're aware. So this case is very much in the public eye, as it were. Oh, is it? Even had some famous detective poking around, you know. In this old house, who would you believe? Yes, Mr. Herlock Sholmes. Hmm, could have been. Didn't catch the chap's name. Not really my cup of tea, all that detective business. Oh, but you have a copy of Rance Magazine here, so... Eh, who? Uh, no, um... He's a faker. Anyway, the chap's investigating the foreigner's room as we speak. So he's in Soseki-san's room. It's a bally nuisance is what it is. The whole neighborhood's twitching at its curtains now. Super rare job, that's why it subsides. Oh, okay. I don't like all this fuss. It's jolly unsettling. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to do... I'm going to change stuff up. Because usually I look at my TV. But when I was watching back um, my playthrough yesterday, I realized that I was saying things like a s half a second earlier. So it, it would ruin the dialogue. So now I'm going to look at my recording screen and read the dialogue, and it should line up right. I'm going to test it out. So now I'm going to look at it this way. It's weird. 
about Mr. Natsume then, Mr. Gerda. Please do tell us. Ah, oh, yes, the Japanese chap. Only been lodging here for a week. Oh, just one week? So you moved in very recently then? I have two lodgers most of the time. One on the ground floor and one just below us. Oh, wait, so he's on the third floor then? The first floor room became a bit. Whoa! I missed it. First floor room became available a week ago, you see. There'd been ARG. Okay. Dash it all, Joan! Do be careful! Oh my goodness! I'm terribly sorry, sir! I wonder if it was the maid that killed him, because she's acting pretty suspicious. Whenever he tries to say something, she spills the tea over him. If you want to know my opinion. I thought he was a shady sort from the moment I set eyes on him. Oh, why? He seemed to have the most nervous disposition, always shaking and looking over his shoulder. The man had shady written across his sweat silked brow, if you ask me. Her lines tell when she slaps her cheek. I think so. I said to myself, Joan, that man is trouble. Sooner or later, he's going to do something untoward. And I'm really wrong about anything. Mm. We won't be calling this maid as a witness, that's for sure. Oh, but you will. Was there anything else that struck you as suspicious about the man at all? Yes, oh yes, indeed there was. And she's dying to tell us. The Shady Lodger. Had you noticed anything else at all about your lodger, Mr. Natsume? Oh, m about your lodger, Mr. Natsume. Oh my word, yes! The man was shadier than an orchard! Could you elaborate? Well, take the man's room. Absolutely stuffed full of books it is. More than anyone could ever read. It's because he's a student. He was studying. And never so much as passes the time of day with another living soul. I haven't seen a single visitor call. Because he's foreign and he doesn't have friends here. He just trots off to that old bookshop every single day and comes back at five to light the gas fire. And the funny little man is up long past the time everyone else in the house has gone to bed too, because he's reading. Oh, I see. The gentleman on the ground floor goes to bed at around nine each night. But I've never known that Japanese fellow to retire any earlier than two in the morning. Ah. Uh. Could you clarify something, I wonder? What, pray? How do you know so much about Mr. Natsume's routine? Ooh. I would understood that neither the lodgers, uh, neither of the lodgers, blah, neither of the lodgers live on this floor of the house, is that correct? That's right, yes. They're both below us, on the first floor and the street level. Then, how is it that you know so much about the lives of your lodgers? The precise times that they come back in the evening, for example, even the times they go to bed. Ah! Good grief, Joan, be more careful, woman! Oh my goodness, sir, I'm terribly sorry, sir! Hmm... Something doesn't add up here. They're so suspicious. But because they're so suspicious, they might not even be the real killer. They could just be like really crazy witnesses. The incident two days ago. It seems that the incident took place at around five in the evening. Did you happen to look out of the window at around that time? Hmm, <clears throat> the window. Yes, we noticed that the window over there looks out over Briar Road. The incident took place on the pavement just on the far side of the street. Was there anyone suspicious loitering nearby? Five o'clock is dinner time in the Garjab household. So I'm afraid I don't remember seeing anything. How about you, Joan? No, 
there, sir. It would have been dusk outside already at that hour. Okay, so these actually aren't witnesses. They're just the landlords of Natsume's um, lodging place. Okay. I thought they were witnesses, so they absolutely didn't see anything. And with the fog as well, I should think it would have been quite impossible to see the other side of the road. No, oh, I see. Did you notice anything else out of the ordinary then? Such as? Anything at all, even if it seems unrelated. Hm, huh. well. Yes? Was there something then? Well, there's nothing particularly significant, but at around that sort of time in here that- Ah! For the love of God, Joe, watch what you're doing! Oh, dear me, what have I done? I'm awfully sorry, sir. Do be more careful, woman. Of course, sir. If I may, Mr. Naru- <laughs> Naru, hello? <laughs> Oh, uh, yes? I have an exceedingly good memory, and as far as I remember... Nothing of any significance took place here at that hour. Nothing at all. Oh, really, Mr. Garadab? Did you like the bird mounts? Um, let me see. If I remember correctly, I didn't think they looked that cool either. Bird mounts. The way you were talking before, it sounded rather like there might have been. Oh, well, as I was saying, it was just a trifle matter, really. Nothing of. Arr! Joan Dashnall, what's the matter with you, woman? Begging your pardon, sir. Nothing happened. Hmm, yes, quite. Nothing happened. We sat down to a quite uneventful meal, hmm, Joan? That's right, Mr. Garadip. What is the matter with these two? Uh, let's see, bird mounts. No, I don't like them. <laughs> They're not that pretty either. It sounds like something happened in here in this room on the evening of the incident, but what? I suspect there was some hanky-panky between the two. I wish I knew. Mr. Natsume's room. Could you tell us which floor Mr. Natsume's room is on? Why, certainly. Just below us on the first floor. And Mr. Shaw's is investigating there, even as we speak? Yes. Tell me Nuts, his name. I'd ask him to look into the matter, so I gave him the key. Mr. Natsume has engaged Mr. Shaw's services? That's a blatant lie. Would it be alright if we also had a look around? In Mr. Ma uh, Natsume's room, I mean? <laughs> Don't see why not. It's just down one flight of stairs. Who knows if we'll find anything that could be- uh, that could help us with the case, but we have to try. We need all the clues we can lay our hands on, shall we? Yes, and while we're there... We could speak with Mr. Scholz again. Perhaps he'll be able to tell us more. Maybe we'll do a little deduction. Deducing! Okay, uh, how do I go back? Uh, oops, move. And we're going to... No! What? This is not some room. Wow, it's so depressing. There's no windows. <laughs> Just look at this place. Cat! I'm a kitty cat. Hey Kirby, how you doing? Thanks for joining! Happy Thursday! And smell it. It's so musty in here. I suppose it's the mountains of old books that are responsible for that. I don't think I've ever seen so many books in all my life. What are you talking about? The uh, Strongheart's office. All those books. No, me neither. It's so dark in here, too. 
Is that the window over there? Hey, Smooth, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Thursday. Hope you've been well, dude. Look at the golden bird mount. I did. It's not pretty. <laughs> well, it was a window, I think. Yes, once upon a time. But for some reason, it's been closed up with bricks and mortar. So this is where Mr. Natsume lives. By the way, I haven't spotted Mr. Sholmes anywhere, have you? No, that's true. But according to what Mr. Garuda told us, the great detective should be around here somewhere investigating. He's gonna be like on the right. Okay, uh, first I'm going to, oops, nope, that's nothing. Yeah, 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 sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah. Look at all those books stacked up there. They must, they almost reach the ceiling. They're all works of English literature, and they're all, they all smell so musty. With this volume of books to hand, you'd never be short of reading material, would you? No, what a dreamy idea. A bad dream, maybe. For me, at least. Mind you, I don't imagine the book that's at the bottom of the pile that will, be, will ever be read again. Ah, so reading is an experience that comes but once in a lifetime, just as the tea ceremony teaches us. I certainly didn't expect the conversation to turn down the path of tea ceremony philosophy. Okay, uh, for moving around, I have to look at my screen because uh, the stream's screen kind of lags. Could you even call this a window? I think so. It was a window at one time after all. Although all that remains is a frame around some bricks now. So really, it's just a wall then, isn't it? But why would anyone deliberately brick it up like that? I'm afraid I have no idea. Ah! Perhaps Mr. Natsume painted the brick design in a flip fit of whimsy. Ugh, that's alarmingly feasible. Anyway, whatever the reason, the lack of ventilation in here makes the place very oppressive. It does. I imagine being cooped up in a room like this would be extremely trying. Uh, this desk. That desk seems to be wedged into a crevice between the mountains of books on either side. I suppose Mr. Natsume would sit there and read while stroking his cat. But surrounded on all sides by these towering old tomes, surely he dreamt of books every night as well. Yes, he must have done. Mustn't he? Oh, what's this? It's a receipt from a second-hand bookshop. Your books. Poofy boat toast or wavy toast. Yeah, I... Oh, man. Uh, I started doing Ring Fit Adventure in the morning, and then I walked two miles, at least two and a half miles every day after work now, and I'm exhausted. My body is starting to get super sore, but I'm trying to get healthy, and I'm trying to lose weight because I gained 15 pounds during uh, COVID. Not very healthy. <laughs> oh yes, Mr. Natsuma's name is on it and the date of purchase, ah, two days ago at 4.45 p.m. That's the day of the incident. That's just a short while before he was embroiled in the terrible attack. He must have been on his way back from buying some old books. Uh, but received discovered in Mr. Natsume's room for some books that he had for, purchased from a second pan bookshop before the incident. So now we need to know the location of the bookshop, and then that'll probably help be like, oh, he possibly couldn't have done this because look at where he is compared to where the victim was. Um, more books, tea, blanket, wastebasket, bag, cats. Healthy toast. Heck yeah, I want to be healthy and strong. Oh look, it's a beckoning cat from home. It's a bit big and bulky, isn't it? Surely Mr. Natsume didn't bring that maneki nickel all the way from Japan with him. I hardly think you're in a position to comment, Mr. Narohoro. Are you forgetting the enormous Dharma doll that you brought in your luggage? Well, it can be dangerous traveling abroad. I wanted a lucky charm. Buff toast? <laughs> I don't think I'll ever be buff. I think the buffest I ever was was back in 2000, probably 13 or 14. 
because I was I was really working out then, and I ran like three miles every day. Yeah. Um, well, I imagine Mr. Natsume wanted the same, and this cat is sure to beckon a good luck. Uh, good luck to him. It's not doing a very good job so far, is it? You mustn't say such things. How did she read my mind? I didn't say a word. Why are my eyes such a giveaway? Because you're an honest person, you know, Skin. Okay, now. Whoops! I forgot the cat. Before I talk to Sholmes. Oh. Oh yeah, get them stretches. Oh, where are you going? Oh my! What an adorable little cat. Perhaps he's looking after all the books while his master is away. I don't know about that. He disappeared into that pile of books as quick as a flash. It wasn't quick, but okay. It was a tricolor Nike, was it? <clears throat> Wasn't it? Do they even have that sort of cat here in Great Britain? Perhaps Mr. Natsume brought the little creature with him from Japan. That's made me feel homesick now. Already? We've only been here in the country for two days. Yeah, books, 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 books. And now I suppose we talk to shows. Ah, look, Mr. Naruhodo. Aha, there he is. Where did he appear from? He seems to be engrossed at the pages of an old book. I hope you won't mind if we disturb him. Hello, Mr. Sholmes. Ah, you two. Good day. Now, let me see. Where was it that we met? Oh, Mr. Sholmes, we were together on the SS Burya. Yes, of course. The Burya. And let me see. What happened on that voyage? It was Kazuma Asogi. He died. Tragically. Why did you... You couldn't just say, um, Pavlova? <laughs> he died. Tragically. But you were a great help to us. Ah, oh, yes, but of course, the case of Mr. Asogi. It was the one with their snake, wasn't it? Oh. Well, you seem to remember something of it, at least. What an honor to be remembered vaguely by the great Herlock Sholmes. This is Mr. Oh, no, no, my dear madam, hold your tongue. I pride myself on my superior powers of recollection. Your names are safely recorded in my brain attic. Miss Nanuhodo. And Mr. Susato. Have a cat. Oh, thank you. Try the other way around, Mr. Sholmes. Ah, 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 ah. I lose the first round. In truth, I'd hope to invite you both to my Baker Street suite, suite in the day we arrive from London. I can talk blah blah blah. But some Scotland Yarders ambushed me at the railway station and whisked three away to a crime scene. It was an entirely trivial case, of course. I sold the matter in no matter than 30 minutes. So they apprehended Soseki-san in that short of an amount of time? I'm afraid the pursuits of a new case have dulled my recollection of my past involvements a little. A little? It is a mistake to think that one's brain attic has elastic walls and can distend to any extent. I do my best to forget useless facts, lest they should elbow out the useful ones. Yes, those are my own words of inimitable wisdom, you know, from an adventure entitled A Study in Scarlet. Please, there's no need to quote yourself. I don't always remember my pearls of wisdom, but fortunately, my associate pens them beautifully. He must be an iris, I suppose. Uh, JT, do you know that some mounts have original OST? Yes, like the Magitek armor has the Final Fantasy VI theme. And that is why I mostly ride my Magitek armor around, because Final Fantasy VI is my favorite. I really want them to remaster uh, Final Fantasy VI, not just like bring the original SNES games, like not porting over, like remake Final Fantasy VI. It would be so beautiful and so nice. The Golden Mounts have the same main title music. Oh, that's pretty cool. That would, that would be nice to have. Mr. Sholmes. 
We have some extremely important questions to ask you about the truth of the case you just mentioned. Goodness, what an earnest expression. My dear madam, I should be only too pleased, and this murky room is an apt place to, discur to discuss the murky case. Okay, uh, converse. Uh, like the title music of FS7, like that. Oh, so it's every single main uh, Final Fantasy series title music? <gasps> oh, oh, no, or is it the um, the prelude music? The one that goes... No, no? Like what? Uh, Mr. Natsume's arrest. We know this to be the lodgings of a Japanese foreign student by the name of Soseki Natsume. The prelude music, but the 4T version. Oh, okay. So it is a prelude. That's still nice. I would like to have that. It seems that you assisted on his arrest, Mr. Sholmes. For the stabbing of a young woman outside here on Briar Road. Hmm. Natsume. Yes, I believe it was a na name rather along those lines. And Mr. Natsume denies it. Was it really justifiable to arrest him on so little? Remember, he did that to me too on the ship, so... I'm sorry, Mr. Sato. But I have not the slightest idea what you mean. What? I can't believe he was just looking Susato's son squarely in the eye while fading in ignorance. I assure you, I am not merely fading in ignorance. <laughs> it would appear as if the pair of you are under some misapprehension. Oh? How? I assure you, I have no recollection of accusing your stooped compatriot of the crime. But that doesn't make sense! The good detective of Scotland Yard- Oh, whoops, that's Sholmes. The good detective of Scotland Yard made the following request of me, and I quote verbatim. We need you to ascertain the identity and whereabouts of a man seen fleeing the uh, crime scene. Ah, a man seen fleeing. There were a number of books scattered on the pavement at the scene. From the book plates, I was quickly able to determine the bookshop from which they had been purchased. On speaking with the proprietor, I was immediately led to this address. Elementary, wouldn't you say? I believe there is a receipt around here somewhere from the establishment in question. So you don't think Mr. Natsume is the culprit then? Hmm, that I could not tell you. But it was aggravating my uh, but it was aggravating my faculties. Hence, why I returned here. However, this place is such a trove of fascinating books. I found myself quite lost in biblio bibliophily, bibliophily, bibliophily uh, in books. <laughs> Do not be deceived into believing that I am a man of leisure. No, no, no. Oh dear. Uh, Mr. Garda, the landlord. Ah, tell me. Have you encountered the landlord of these lodgings? Yes, Mr. Garda, a retired military man. Oh, I forgot to look at their, um... Yes, 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 stop, stop talking. I forgot to look at their profiles. Okay. Uh, maid. A maid who works at the Garadab household, her main duty appears to be standing at Mr. Garadab's side pouring tea. John Garadab is 46. A retired army man who's a landlord of the lodgings, rented by the defendant, Mr. Natsume, an old knee injury means he's confined to the chair both the time and her last one was okay. Wow, look at how, like, how old Natsume looks. And he's 33. And Sholmes looks so young, and he's 34. Sholmes is the same age as me. Oh my goodness. Ah! <laughs> It was the first time I've ever met a soldier from the great British institution that is the services. And it was the first time I've ever met a maid from the great British institution that is service. <laughs> I didn't think it was that funny. I do apologize. As you may very as you may well be aware, many households in London employ a maid. Yes, I read as much as my Great Britain primer. And so conversely, whether or not a household employs a maid has come to betoken the social standing of those dwelling therein. Betoken their social standing? Sorry? Put simply, my dear fellow, those who employ at least a single maid are considered middle class. Those who do not are beneath that. 
the upper echelons of society, of course. Households employ enough staff to constitute a large family. Goodness, how extraordinary! As you can appreciate, for those on a precarious boundary between middle and lower classes, being able to afford just one maid is of the first importance. I had no idea. And it is for precisely that reason that I find great stimu stimulation in the situation upstairs. Specifically, in the retired army veteran, Mr. John Garadub. Oh? Affable as he is, the fellow is hiding something. Ah, uh, definitely he is. Whether or not it imposes on the circumstances of this case, I am yet unable to ascertain. I am thoroughly lost on what he means to say. Oh, so maybe, um... John Garadub and the maid were doing shady stuff, but it wasn't necessarily related to the murder. Maybe it was just like, oh, hey, we gotta, like, keep up appearances. Is the maid... Maybe the maid is his wife and he's pretending that he has a maid just to appear like he has status, but it's really just his wife? That's... I, I don't know. The Ninja Room! This room is thoroughly suffocated for the soul, my dear fellow. I assure you, any man whose lot is to dwell in a place such as this will stab somebody sooner or later. Mr. Natsume has stabbed no one! Ah, but sooner or later, as I said. I don't believe that's the issue here. About this dark little room, Mr. Scholes. Why is there no longer a window? Do you have any idea? No window. Well, I mean, I can clearly see that there is a window of sorts. But it's been completely blocked up with bricks. Ah, oh, I see. The answer to that question is quite simple. Window tax. What? <laughs> window tax? What is that? Surely, not a tax on windows. Precisely that. What? Oh my goodness. Yes, call your wife a maid, she will divorce you. I know, right? <laughs> but I think that's why some people get married, because they're like, Oh, I can't live on my own. I need to have someone, like, cook for me and clean for me. Who will do my laundry <laughs> if I don't have a wife? Oh my gosh. Until relatively recently, a tax was levied on households in this country by the number of their windows. Those of lesser means, having inherited a sizable and costly family home, perhaps, rapidly closed windows up. While the rich opened windows here, there, and everywhere. In an effort to curry favor with those in power by furnishing with large sums of tax money. How awful! And unjust! Forcing people to live in rooms devoid of lights? Yeah, that's, that's gotta be like human cruelty. Indeed, disease was rife as a result. Exactly! Ugh, no fresh air, no sunlight, people are gonna get sick. So some 40 years ago, the thereabouts, the window tax was abolished. But its legacy remains, as you can see, in squalid lodgings such as these, for example. I suppose Mr. Nassimus' stipend for living here in London isn't very generous, perhaps. It would appear so, I've done a little digging. And discovered that these lodgings were offered at an extraordinarily low price. Because the room is so awful, I should think. Apparently, Mr. Natsume only moved in here about one week ago. Yes, that's correct. However... Wait! Only one week? But the maid already knew his entire schedule? So if it... Hmm. I don't know. I don't believe the low rent is explained by the shabby nature of the accommodation. Oh? Still, that is of little relevance here. A matter not worthy of further attention. But it's gonna come up. Are you sure? I'm curious now. Well, I believe I've told you all I can now. Thank you, Mr. Ho Sholmes. Ah, yes, Mr. Nadahoro. Was it not your intention to become a practitioner of law? You remembered that, did you? 
Will you perhaps be offering your services in this very matter, I wonder? To the occupant of this room, Mr... Natsume, was it? I'm not sure. Not sure? On what grounds? Well, I actually defended someone in court here only yesterday. Really? Well then, I congratulate you, sir, on an ambition realized, and so promptly, too. The thing is... It's really made me question things. Am I right to believe in my clients? To trust in their innocence? Hey, Asogi, Kazuma believed in you, so you should believe in your clients, although Mr. McGilda did seem a little shady. Hmm, yes, trust. Mr. Sholmes, how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? Mr. Natsume didn't do it, did he? Believe in the client that- Believe in the client that believes in you! Yours is a spear that will pierce the heavens! <laughs> My dear fellow, I have the first idea! Oh, but... I thought that's why you were here. Didn't you come back to investigate? Ah, oh, yes, that was indeed my initial intention. But there are simply too many fascinating books in here. I couldn't possibly ignore them. Oh, I see. Nevertheless, there are two facts that I can state quite unequivocally. The man who fled the scene of the crime two days ago was the Japanese occupant of this room, and... There are witnesses who swear to having seen the same man commit the crime. That is all I can say. Hmm. Ah, and one more thing. Oh? What is it, Mr. Sholmes? Tell us. I cannot say with any certainty whether or not it is of relevance to this case, but I am quite sure that the retired army man who owns this property is hiding something. Duh. Mr. Garadab is? Mr. Sholmes said as much before, actually, didn't he? Anyway, at present, that is really all that plays on my mind in re relation to this case. Mr. Naruhodo, as yet our investigations have uncovered nothing that could help establish Mr. Nasume's innocence. No, you're right. Perhaps it's time we probe a little deeper into Mr. Garadab's secrets. Just remember, I cannot be sure whether the landlord's secret will prove to be of relevance or not. But I wish you every success, of course, Mr. Naruhodo. Hmm, a busy man indeed. He's gone back to his book in the corner of the room. Okay, then I will leave. Uh, go back to Garuda? Adonde? Oh, there they are. Ah, oh, you, Paragon. Tell me, was the detective chap, I forget his name, still hard at work down there? Mr. Herlock Sholmes? Ah, oh, yes, rings a vague bell. All that detective business isn't really my thing, I'm afraid. Well, Mr. Sholmes is in his element down there. Drolly good show. I'll have a cup of tea, if you please, Joan. Now then, why don't you tell me what- Ah! For the umpteen time woman, will you watch what you're bally well doing? I shall be selling dinner shortly, sir. Hmm? Uh, yes, of course. Frightfully rude of me, but I'm afraid I shall have to ask you to take a leave, if you'd be so kind. I already messed up his accent. Ugh, accents are hard. Voices are hard. Oh, yes, of course. We are deeply grateful for all of your assistance. All your assistance. I can talk. Not at all, not at all. Don't get much chance to talk with young foreigners like yourselves. It's been a pleasure. Virtual hugs! Thanks for the hugs, Regal! Best of luck and all that. Perhaps you can see yourselves out. But I'm here to snoop more, aren't I? According to Mr. Sholmes, Mr. Garadab is hiding something. And since no other avenues of investigation seem open to us at the moment, perhaps we should do some digging. Digging where? What more can I dig? What? <laughs> I thought this was a nude statue, and I was like, what is that butt? 
But now it's Sholmes! Ah, what's he doing over there? M Mr. Sholmes! Aha! Uh -huh. We meet again, my dear fellows! Good gracious! When did you sneak in here? Herlock Sholmes, sir, at your service. Whatever were you doing over by the window? I'm given to watching the evening sky as the sun sets, madam. Is he stirring his tea with his pipe? Okay, yeah, that's why I'm like, oh, that's so gross, because, like, if you're smoking a pipe, you gotta, like, breathe in. But if you're stirring the tea, wouldn't some liquid get in there? So you're just like, <clears throat> like, it would be totally ineffective, would it not? Yes, sadly, cheerful as a room downstairs undoubtedly is, this lacks, uh, it lacks an aperture for such observation. So I took the liberty of borrowing a small corner of space by the window up here. Hmph, <laughs> well. Keeping an eye to one's windows at dusk is a prudent thing to do in London, I'm gathering. Oh, and one other thing, Mr. Nodhodo. Oh, me? I thought perhaps you might be in need. Are there certain great detectives? Great mind. Oh my gosh, are we deducing? Wait, he's not talking about... Is he? I... I didn't expect to be going through that again so soon. Do 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 sing do do sing. Do, do you mean, Mr. Sholmes? There's a mighty secret to this modest room. My eyes see even the most trivial of trifles. I take it you're prepared, Mr. Nadahodo. I think so. There's just some time. Wait, there's just time enough for one of my greatly admired great deductions. Let us conclude the matter before dark. Yes, deducing! This I actually like. Mr. Garadab. Though it received, you are a military man of considerably distinguished service. Your standing as a landlord is most certainly not what one might call first rate. Hmm? I'm afraid, sir, that is, that is all too clear to me. There are two conclusions I've been able to draw by careful observation of your living arrangements. I beg your pardon? The first is that even as we speak, you are concealing the presence of a ferocious beast in your care. Yeah. And the second is that as a result of the beast's violent rampage, you have lost something very dear to you. Uh, uh, what? Mr. Nardo, to look! The old man's broken out in a cold sweat. Unbelievably, it seems Mr. Sholmes' conclusions are both spot on. How? How could you possibly... How could I possibly know, you mean to inquire? The answer couldn't be simpler, sir. For in the dense jungle of logic and reasoning, I am the king of beasts. <laughs> ah! <laughs> and I know only too well that wild beasts are not easily tamed. So, shall we begin? Once again, Herlock Shorbs is proud to present his logic and reasoning spectacular. Yes, let's do this! A great deduction. The game is afoot. Nature of the beast. It certainly shouldn't take a great detective to see. That a fearsome beast has been on the rampage of late within these four walls. Thus we are faced with the question, what form might the beast take? Ah, oh, for a man with a military breeding, your eyes are uncommonly candid. Herlock Scholz and his trusty partner, Larsine Upan. <laughs> Upan! <laughs> oh, my stomach hurts! Ah, oh, my stomach hurts from exercising! Uh... <laughs> Good one, Alex! <laughs> Jelly fails to stomach that joke. <laughs> cause, cause Upan sounds so silly. 
It probably exists somewhere. I don't doubt it. It probably does. <laughs> uh, your friend of glass, Mr. Garda, leads us directly to the answer. The true nature of the beast that has run rapids here is revealed by that lion statue. <laughs> yes, do it on me, man. You appear unimposing at best. A fact that has fueled your admiration for the mighty lion, the king of beasts. <laughs> what is this pivot, I ask you? In the end, your admiration became so great, in fact, that you had living, breathing specimens shipped from India, which you tried to keep in this very house. Wait, is he the real owner of the cat? Yet living with such a wild beast proved more difficult than you had imagined. The chilling traces of a wild rampage are still very much in evidence. Well... Yet as we look around, the beast in question fails to present itself. Where could this angry creature have disappeared to? Madam? I pray you do not consider me unchivalrous, but it is plain to me with one glance in your direction. It, it is? Your dress pocket gives us a handsome clue as the beast's current whereabouts. For protruding from its handbill, from it is a handbill advertising a circus show. Ah! Yes, you sought to dispose of this terrifying lion, Mr. Garadab. At Batty's Circus. A travelling show currently sojourning in a nearby park. I have observed the tents. You sold the savage lion, sir, to the circus troop. I, I most certainly did not. I believe I have made my point. The face and beast which ran amok in this room was an Indian lion. And a simple visit to the circus now will reveal the lion prancing jubilantly through a ring of fire. I don't think it is a lion. I think it's the cat. But then, hmm. The aftermath. Now, Mr. Garadab. It is plainly clear that you still have deep feelings for this formidable beast. Indeed, in that blithe pose, the distress this loss has caused you is veritably intangible. Your head weighs heavy on your shoulders. The pain you feel is revealed by that supporting arm. In this fit of tears, you let your beloved beast go. The strain of losing something so dear to you is so clearly visible in your visage. Nonsense, man. I... I simply... But what, we must now ask ourselves, is the true cause of this pain? The cannon! And we need only follow the direction of the gaze to find the answer. Yes, it is this pile of bills that has given rise to the pain you suffer. Every envelope contains another demand for payments. Ah. For this cartloads of meat, potatoes, wheat and tea. Indeed, feeding your beloved has devastating impact on the financial circumstances of your household. And so you had no choice but to let it go. Yes, well, um... Now, in a final fit of rage, the ferocious beast carried out one last unimaginable attack. Uh, unimaginable? Ooh. The aftermath of which can be clearly seen by the observing the cop- ah! Observing the carpet over there. I can talk. A very expensive woolen carpet, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, dearie me! What should have caused such a destructive outburst? Ah! Uh, I think they actually accidentally burnt it, or not? This time, madam, I'm afraid it is you who has inadvertently revealed the truth to me. Your wandering eye has settled upon the answer very nearly, neatly indeed. <laughs> yes, to explain the dire state of the carpet, we only need to look at the Tower of Cakes. Or the candlestick. That's what's on the ground, that's the white thing. Ah! Oh. There's no creature more dangerous on Earth than a beast with an unsatiated appetite. 
Was it or was it not once said by a certain noblewoman? If they have no bread, let them eat cake. Food is at the heart of all tragedy, in fact. Whatever do you mean? Having tired of the taste of cake, the beast began to stalk its death's prey. I'm sure I need not spell out the nature of this final act of destruction carried out by the beast. There's only one logical conclusion. Worked into a frenzy by hunger, the lion attacked and ate the carpets. The teeth marks in the carpets are a perfect match with those of a lion I once saw in India. It was that's what they were doing. They were probably putting out a fire. Carpet not on by starving lion. Thus concludes Herlock Job's great deduction of this beastly puzzle. Iris is more spot on than you, dude. <laughs> ah! What is the matter with you, Joan? You're pouring scalding hot tea all over me. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Garadip. I'm afraid I didn't notice. My deductions can be startling sharp. It stands to reason that your cup runneth over. Indeed, my revelations can make people spill tears at times, too. Tears of frustration. Oh! Um, Mr. Scholes? Sorry to butt in, again. But, can I make an observation? Why, certainly, Mr. Nodhudo. What is it? Again. Well, your deductions just now. Do you really think a lion could have fit inside a room of this size? Indeed, it is the only explanation for the facts. The terrifying truth all too often lies in beyond the realms of common sense. But wouldn't it be an idea to consider what lies inside the realms of common sense as well? But if an uncaged lion had run amok in this very room, surely Mr. Garadev and his maid would have been hurt, or worse. Ah, uh, that's where you are stuck. No doubt the former military man held his own against the beast using that large cannon. I thought you said that they sold the lion to the circus. And what about the food? Meat and potatoes are one thing. But I don't believe I have ever heard of a lion that drinks tea. Ah, oh, my dear Miss Susato, it occurs to me with some regularity. That irrespective of race and breeding, whenever anyone lands on Great British soil, they are infused with a highly appropriate taste for afternoon tea. It's because afternoon tea, you actually get a chance to like take a break, eat a snack, d don't do work. That's why everyone drinks the tea. Oh, what a glorious notion. Well then, Mr. Naruhodo, it's your turn to shine again. I wish we had tea time, but I guess we have break times in America. But it's not like mandatory. It's not like, hey, you get 30 minute break time just to like, like chill and chat with coworkers. I had a feeling this was coming. A slight massage. That's all Mr. Sholm's deductions need. You can do it. Excellent. I've been waiting for my trusty partner in deduction to step forward, Mr. Narahudo. We don't even know yet whether or not this is going to help with Mr. Natsume's case. Still, uncovering the truth is always worthwhile, whatever the motivation. At least, that's what I want to believe. In school we had a 40 minute lunch period and at work we have a 30 minute lunch break. It never ends. Yeah. It's like, how come the older we get, the less breaks we get? It's like, we're working longer, we should get more breaks. Let us start again from the beginning. A Herlock Sholmes Logic and Reasoning Spectacular. Do, 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 do. Course correction. Hold it, Mr. Sholmes. The nature of the beast. I'm still gonna say it's a cat. Certainly shouldn't take a great detective to see. That a fearsome beast has been on the rampage of late within these four walls. It's Meow Gana. Ew, no. I can't wait to start playing on Persona 5 Strikers again soon, but it's gonna be a long time. What form might this beast take? 
Oh, for a man with military breeding, your eyes are uncommonly candid. Hi. A furtive glance, Mr. Garrido, leads us directly to the answer. It's that lion, huh? Are you gonna play, um, Super Mario Brothers? Su Why would I play Super Mario Brothers? I think, um, I forgot where you even left off. I'm still in Sendai. Um, I'm still doing... I think I'm finding all the locks for uh, the author's uh, jail. No, the other SMB? Super Metroid? Brothers? <laughs> I really didn't see the lion thing coming. No, but if you observe Mr. Garadub's reaction... It rather seems as though some beast did indeed run amok here in this room. Yes, yeah, something with a very fierce nature. Send that, that one place, uh, Gamera destroyed in that to- uh, in that one movie. I don't watch a lot of Godzilla movies. But it could have been a lion transported from India. Super Mario, Super Monkey Ball, Super Meat Boy. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of SMB games. So what was it then? We must follow Mr. Garadub's gaze. That will lead us to the true answer. Mm. I can't move, so... Mortar shells? The These are shells for the cannon, are they? Super Monkey Ball? I've never played Super Monkey Ball. <laughs> Super Meat Boy is so fun, but hard. Yeah, I've watched people play Super Meat Boy, that is not for me. <laughs> What a strange place to keep them. I imagine they have some significance to Mr. Garadub from his time in the army. Ah, of course. He mentioned a battle to us before, didn't he? Do you remember? He said that he'd been shot in the knee. Perhaps it was one of these that hit him. If that hit his knee, he would be entirely blown up, Susato. If around that side had hit his knee, there'd be nothing left of it, or Mr. Garadub for that matter. Thank you, Yudnosuke. Or is it Shin Megami Bensei? <laughs> I still have to play um, Nocturne on stream, but I'm thinking before I play Nocturne, maybe I should finish um, Devil Summoner, because that is also a Shin Megami game. They added Morgana as a playable character in SMB. Why? Mr. Sholmes has a Persian slipper. And this man has spent shells. Perhaps it's customary in Britain to display, well, rubbish on the mantelpiece. You have like four game playthroughs going on. I know. I think once I finish um, Great Ace Attorney, um, I'm just going to focus on Dragon Quest, and then after that, I'm gonna put focus on um, uh, aha, photograph frame. A lamb? No, that's a. The the maid is his wife. What's this photograph? It appears to be from Mr. Garadub's wedding. He looks very happy, doesn't he? He does, but you can't make out his bride. No, how unfortunate. Something must have struck the glass over the woman's face. I wonder what happened. Probably best not to delve too deeply there. That's what was happening. It was the wild animal that run amok. They were having a fight. Wait, um... This must have been when Mr. Garadup was still in the army. He seems to be carrying his rather stout bride effortlessly and beaming with a smile at the same time. I suppose he was very strong in his younger years. Hard to imagine now, he's as thin as a rake. Am I supposed to present this? Newlywed bride. The glass is broken so you can't see the bride's face at all, but no amount of practice could hide the woman's plump form. I think powerful would be kinder than plump, Mr. Nadahoro. Yes, she certainly looks like that. There's a lot of horsepower there. Not someone you'd want to upset, that's for sure. Oh, look! Have you noticed her wedding ring? It's very large, isn't it? Yes, that's an unusual design. It looks like some sort of embellished sunflower. Can I present this? You gotta do like four streams a week? <laughs> I can't. I'm going to be too tired. I wish I could. Uh, snappy toast. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna present this. Yes! A bright? Wait. 
The true nature of the beast that has run rampant here is revealed by that newlywed bride. Precisely, Mr. Nanahodo. No other explanation could possibly fit. Yes, this framed print pictures your wife, Mr. Garadub. And while we lament the fact that her face is obscured, we can still make out her mighty arms and note the considerable horsepower they must contain. Oh, um... Indeed, surely any woman of such powerful constitution would be honored to be subscribed as a beast. Uh, honored might be stretching a point. Too late, the fact remains that the beast, which so clearly savaged this room, was your wife, Mr. Garadab. Gah! He has a handprint on his face. The chilling traces of a wild rampage are still very much in evidence. They had a fight. Well. Yet as we look around, the basic question fails to present itself. Where could this angry Keecher have disappeared to? Madam? M me I pray you do not consider me unchivalrous, but it is plain to me with one glance in your direction. I it is? Your dress pocket gives us a handsome clue as the base current whereabouts. The poor fat of the fastest woman is beside herself. Well, I don't know about fragile. Oh, dear. Anyway, Mr. Scholz is quite right. There's no sign of a Mrs. Garrida about anywhere. But it seems there may be a clue as to her whereabouts. A clue that this maid is trying to hide. I wonder where Mr. Garrida's wife could be. I wonder too. Now, if we examine this wedding ring, she is wearing a very large ring. Look! Oh yes, a sunflower design with some rather nice embellishments. I am a creeper! I'm creeper toast. And I found a ring finger of her left hand, which means... It's surely a wedding ring. It looks like it's on there for life too. I can't imagine it would slide off a finger of that size. Creepy toast versus pervy toast. Which one's worse? <laughs> That's something to think, Mr. Narahoro. Not to say. Do you know, Mr. Garadab's wife in the photograph had a ring very much like this one. It was a large sunflower design as well. Really? You have great memory for these things. How do you not remember we just looked at it? Hmm, large sunflower wedding ring. It's quite a coincidence that they have the same ring, isn't it? And the same stature. And they live together. Creeper toast sounds like toast you forgot to throw away and it keeps showing up in the kitchen. Yo, that's amazing. <laughs> that would certainly be a horror movie. Your wedding ring gives us a handsome clue as the beast's current whereabouts. Ah. Indeed it does. That flowery band gleaming on your finger gives you away. For it is identical to the one shown in the hands of Mr. Garadab's bride in this photographic print. In other words, you are no ordinary household maid. No? You are Mr. Garadab's lucky bride. You are Mrs. Garadab herself. Oh my! Word! Well, jolly fine detecting, sir. As you rightly surmised, this is the wife, yes. My Joan. Rather than let herself go, you might say. But she was a belly corporal back. Ah! It would appear that you don't live in the most comfortable of circumstances. So, John and Joan Garadub. What does Garadub? What could Garadub be a pun for? After all, you're a retired at army man, yet you are in the business of renting out rooms. Tush. I would assume, therefore, you have insufficient means to employ a maid. Won't that be correct? It's not right, I tell you. I was second lieutenant of the third regiment. A man has his pride, don't you know? 
by golly, it's a sorry thing where a chap can't even afford to have a single maid in his employ. Yes, here in London, one is rather judged. A household cannot be considered worthy of society if it employs no staff at all. Though in my considered opinion, such concerns about appearances are a folly. You... you mean Mr. Garadzeb has his wife work as his maid? Precisely. Am I right, Mr. Garadzeb? Holy company, obviously. But listen here. This must remain a secret. Tip top secret. Please. The raging wife of Mr. Garadab. Garadab. If you read Garadab backwards, it's Debbie Rag. Mm. Now, Mr. Garadab. It is plainly clear that you still have deep feelings for this formidable beast. Indeed, in that blithe pose, the distress this loss has caused you is very tangible. Your head weighs heavy on your shoulders. The pain you feel being revealed by that supporting arm. Mr. Schultz is quite something. He's still calling Mr. Garadab's wife a beast. Yes, as a woman, that feels rather uncomfortable. But Mrs. Garadab is standing beside her husband as we speak. In other words, he hasn't lost his beloved at all, has he? Oh, how true. Yeah, not nice. Like, oh. Uh... It's like, you married her, why are you being so mean to her, calling her a beast? Employing her as your maid? Like, not cool. So perhaps that supporting arm that seems to be propping up his head... ...has some other significance, then. According to Mr. Sholmes, Mr. Gatterdub's pain is tangible, though. What could that pose of his really signify? Marrying someone you're mean to, way too real for some people. I know, that's so, like, upsetting. Like, why would you do that to yourself? Oh my, look at that bright red mark. Gosh, that's quite something, and clearly made by somebody's hands. Yes, Mr. Garadab has been slapped on the face, it seems. Hard. I've never seen such a clearly defined mark. Whoever could have done such a thing? Well, there's a very limited number of candidates, I'd say. And we present... Kudet! Uh, what about the hot tea in his lap? That's true too, like she keeps pouring scalding hot tea on him. That's not... Well, maybe that's her revenge for him calling her a beast, making her a maid. Your head weighs heavy on your shoulders, the pain you feel revealed by that slapped cheek. And of course, the deliverer of that impressive mark on your cheek that refuses to fade. Was you, Madam Joan Gardab? What if it's their kink? <gasps> she spills tea and does the oh, did I do that? Look at her, like she's already slapping her own face. Maybe that is their kink. Yeah. Well, yes. <laughs> You've been desperate to hide the slap mark on, uh, on your cheek, sir. Wait, so his knee is fine then? Ah! Oh. How the blazes. How did you work that out, man? You know what Mr. Garadab looks like? Um, I don't know if you guys are old enough. Maybe some of you are. But remember, long, long, long time ago, McDonald's Happy Meals toy? They had the little moon man. Um, his head was a crescent moon. He had sunglasses. And I don't know why McDonald's was using a moon man as his mascot. Right? Oh, you think? Ah, oh, but that that's what... Now that he's facing forward like this, that's what he looks like. I get it. She's a sun, he's a moon. Because she's got the sun ring, sunflower ring. And he, his head is like a crescent moon shape. Oh my, I know, he ride a jeep. Yes, he did ride a jeep. I was like, hey dear, how you doing? Thanks for joining, happy Thursday. But yes, I'm so glad other people know. Nothing escapes the notice of one trained in the art of observation, my dear fellow. Sun and moon. Yeah, at least that's what I think. 
But it only came to me because he looked at- he looked forward like that. That's why you haven't looked directly at us even once. To keep your other side from view. Well, um... <clears throat> now, let us proceed to the next conundrum. Why were you subjected to such a violent slap? In other words, we must ask ourselves what caused Madame Garda to fly into a rage. And we need only to follow the direction of your gaze to find the answer. Yes, it is pile of bills that has given rise to the pain you suffer. Didn't Mr. Shaw say that the bills were all for lion fodder? <laughs> yes, but now we have established that the lion never existed. Which can only mean that the thing responsible for gobbling up all that food was Mr. Garrett's wife. Mr. Naruto, she's a person, not a thing! Yes, well... She's also a person who gave her husband a mighty slap around the face. One so hard that it left a perfect hand mark, in fact. Yes, why would a woman want to hit her husband with such force, I wonder? I'd love to know the answer to that question. Okay, so... Um... <gasps> oh, hello! What's this? Bookmark? Ah, someone must be reading this book at the moment. There's a bookmark in here, look! Mr. Garadab is clearly an avid reader. Oh, wait a minute. I don't think this is a bookmark. Oh no, so it isn't. It's a note written in a woman's hands. Oh, James, I love you. Yours, Mary. And look next to the signature here. Lip marks, made with lipstick. Oh, what a passionate and romantic gesture. Don't get any ideas, Susoto san. Wait, but his name's not James, isn't it, John? Oh dear, I'm sorry. Oh, I can't even see the record. F4 stream? Why? Is it down? No! Is it down? Is it really? Oh my gosh. Is it... Can you guys see me? Are we still going? <laughs> huh? It's showing on my end. Uh, is the stream still low? I don't want to. Oh, okay. Oh, shoot. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, I will keep reading. Oh dear, I'm sorry. So this bookmark is actually a love note then. Hmm. Now I can- okay. I will present this love note. Probably some frame drops. I wonder why. I mean, actually wait, Spectrum was a little, um... It was a little wonky yesterday. I didn't have stable internet connection yesterday. In the morning. Wait, but yesterday's stream was fine. I don't know. Yes, it is this love note that has given rise to the pain you suffer. Oh, James, I love you. Yours, Mary. Passionate indeed. Refresh chat. Perhaps the sender of this note, a certain Miss Mary, is the fly in the ointment here. Ah! But I don't know the Bally woman. You don't know her? That note wasn't written to me. It was just in the book. I don't know how it got there. It was just in there, you say? That's right, that's what I've been saying- Ah! A likely story. Now listen here, Joan, old thing. I explained at the time. Oh, um, now I can, um, see people. Yeah, his name is John. Joan is 38. Eight year difference, dang. Okay, okay. I bought that book at the second-hand place, and that note must already been there. So there- now there are two people that were at the second-hand bookstore. 
um, Natsume and John. Garuda. John Doe. <laughs> His name is John Doe. So, the previous owner of the book was using the note as a bookmark, you mean? That's right! That's what I've been saying! Arrgh! Unlikely story! For heaven's sake, woman, look at the name! It's written to James! My name, in case you've forgotten, is John! <laughs> Unlikely story! Uh, are you questioning my name now? And there we have it. Arouse the suspicions of the female heart, and you unleash a beast with a most ferocious bite. Ugh. Now, in a final fit of rage, the ferocious beast carried out one last unimaginable attack. Un unimaginable? The aftermath of which will be clearly seen by observing carpets over there. A very expensive woolen carpet, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, dear me! What could have caused such a destructive outburst? Ah. Oh. This time, madam, I'm afraid it is you who has inadvertently revealed the truth to me. Your wandering eye has settled upon the answer very neatly indeed. Yes, to explain the dire state of the carpet, we need only look at the Tower of Cakes. But... but surely Mrs. Garibald didn't eat the carpet? No, of course not. But there doesn't seem to be any doubt that the state of disarray that this room is in is a result of her wild temper. No, that's true. So this is the last part of Mr. Sholem's deduction that we need to fix. We need only follow Miss Scaradub's graves, and that will tell us the real answer. Alright, let's see what we can see. Yes! It's gotta be the candlestick. Right? Candlestick. Oh, no! I meant to examine! No! Yes, to explain the dire state of carpet, we need only look at the candlestick. Most illuminating, my dear fellow, and of course, the only possible way out of this logical labyrinth. Was it still right, even though I didn't examine it? Yes, the remnants of a ferocious attack in which the carpet was devoured are clearly visible. Oh, thank goodness. Indeed they are. The scorch marks at the edge clearly give the truth away. Scorch marks? It would appear that this room was the scene of a little ma mar marital altercation. Miss hmm. Scaredup's mighty arm muscles left an impression not only on her husband's face. But on the entire room, the force of her strike caused the candle to fall from the holder. And in seconds, the carpet was light and the whole corner of the room in flames. Yes, um... <clears throat> For the most ferocious beast in the world is neither a violent liar nor a ventral woman, but fire. And in this room, that ferocious beast bared its claws and ran amok. Eloquently put, my dear fellow. So you see, there is but one conclusion here. After the sparks of marital discord flew, this room was the scene of a fire. Sonic Boom! <laughs> oh no, he really does have a knee injury. Mr. Sholmes, sir. I salute you! Salute your shorts. Now yeah, she's lifting him. Uh, <laughs> bye bye, dude. But now, when did he go to the second-hand store, though? We'll probably also have to go visit the second-hand store, too. So much investigation to do for this case, ugh. It's these dashing long winter nights, you know. Nothing to do but read in front of the fire. 
Luckily, there's a jolly good second-hand bookshop just around the corner. Buy all my old novels there. And in the pages of one particular novel, you discovered some rather illicit material. The second-hand store, where people buy old clothes and haunted video games. <laughs> Never. <laughs> For which your wife would admonish you harshly, it seems. Don't know about admonished. Demolished might be a rather closer to the mark. And Beast is most certainly an apt <laughs> Here we go again. And the carpet? Was that destroyed by fire when a candle fell on the floor? Afraid to say it was. Happened in the blink of an eye, you know. The whole place filled with smoke. Couldn't see a bally thing. I was caught between the old stick's rage and the raging flames. Thanks, have a good night. Okay, Smooth, thanks for joining. Have a good night. Have a good weekend! You paint a torrid picture, sir. One that would have been most entertaining. That's sympathy for you. Didn't take long for the fire to spread, of course. The bally furniture started going up as well. We've had to hide the mess behind that screen for the time being. Okay, so now we get to see what was right. Over here, Mr. Garadab? Well, you have nothing more to hide now, if you'll allow me. Okay, so it was a bookcase. Had all my favorite old novels in that case. But as soon as the fire got hold of them, that was it. Whoosh! Up in smoke. Gosh. Then the wife started hurling things at me. What a terrible sight it must have been. That's why they have all those things hanging, because they had to put out the fire? And so they have to dry everything? I don't know. There was I, back up against the window, under heavy enemy fire. Incendiary books incoming ten to the dozen. Worst of it is, I lost my favorite, a book called The Lion's Pride. The Lion's Pride? Ah, yes, your notorious love of big cats coming through again. I assure you, the title didn't influence my choice in the slightest. So the poor man really did lose something dear to him as a result of the ferocious beast's rampage. Mr. Shulp's deductions turned out to be correct once again. It can only be described as a great British wonder. More like coincidence. I tell you, it was total carnage. Flames everywhere and the old stick in full fettle. Out of interest, what type of day was that? Hmm, not sure I can remember. It was two days ago now. Let's see. Around five o'clock, I think. What if? <laughs> what if the wife accidentally threw a knife and it went out the window and that's what stabbed the victim? <laughs> I don't think that's what would have happened, but there was no one else around. <laughs> so at exactly the same time, as a terrifying incident was unfolding outside your window on the street below. <laughs> Even more terrifying on the inside, I can assure you. The whole oblity could have been flattened outside my window at that moment. And I wouldn't have noticed a dashed thing. That would be the unluckiest guy in the world, I know, right? <laughs> oh, really? I'm thirsty. Uh, Mr. Sholmes? Yes, Mr. Nadahuru, what can I do for you? Well, I think we've got to the bottom of Mr. Garadab's situation now. But what does it have to do with Mr. Natsume's circumstances? I can't help you there, I'm afraid. What? My dear fellow, if you recall, I did say as much from the outset. I warned you that although I knew of the retired army man had to do it, I knew the retired army man to be hiding something. I could not be sure whether his secret would prove to be irrelevant or not. I... I just knew you were going to say that! Ah, 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 ah. 
Now, now, Mr. Nabuhudo, you mustn't lose heart. Bear in mind that all things fall into uh, one of only two categories. Those relevant to the case, and those not. That makes no sense to me. Well, no matter. It is of far greater importance that you make up your mind now. Sorry? Visiting hours at the prison will soon be over. Oh no, is it that time already? Okay, so I guess we're not going to the bookstore? If we are to accept Mr. Natsume's case, we have official paperwork to attend to. So that's it. No more time to think. Perhaps you'd like to betake yourselves to, to bidding us farewell now. I must prepare supper for Mr. Garadeb. Oh, oh, yes, I'm so sorry. Thank you both very much for your time. Soul Sekisan will be waiting for us. And I'm going to have to give him an answer. Okay, now we move. To prison, right? Yeah, prison. Is it not prison? Briar Road? It's time, Mr. Nado. <laughs> Naruhodo, we must hurry back to the prison. Yes, I know. Let's hail a cat. Oh. What's the matter? It looks like something's going on over there in front of the Garadep's house. Hmm? What the F is this? No, thee not, old man. Fall to thy prayers. Who oh, are you calling an old man, you drunk looking nimmy, nimmy, pimmy? There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. Nimmy toes. <laughs> Should I change my name to that? Who's this Horatio fella, eh? What are you on about? Excuse me. Eh? What the? Who are you now? I'm sorry, it just looks as though there might be some problem here. And my associate here, Mr. Ryunosuke Naruhodo, is a lawyer, you see. Eh? Lawyer? What? If I can be of any assistance, I'd be happy to help. I'm from Japan, but I have studied English law. <laughs> Fine. I'll be all be grateful today. But you mock my words. This ain't over yet! Get thee to a nunnery! Do I look like a blooming nun to you? Who the F is this? This guy's a real killer. You can see it all over his face. <laughs> He's got creeper face. I do hope you're not injured. Oh, fair is the maiden. Thou art so gentle. Thank you. What was that all about? There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. Uh, not Horatio either. Forgive the inquiry, sir, but... Are you a lodger here? In the Garza residence? Oh, fair Easter maiden, thou art so right. Yes, I do dwell in this humble abode. Mr. Garadub mentioned that he had another lodger, didn't he? This must be the man. Do you happen to know the other lodger who lives on the first floor? Oh, yes. A gentleman named Natsume. Oh, more worthy a poor must mean my battle words no there could be. Sorry? Battle, did you say? Who is a stronger hanger? <laughs> hanger. Hamlet or Macbeth, Mr. Natsume and I sparred long into the night. I see. Wait, but... Uh, Joan Garadub said that he went to sleep at a normal time. While Sosaki-san stayed up until 2. So what? I don't fully understand, but it seems Mr. Natsume and this gentleman are acquaintances at least. So, fair maiden, so good gentleman. 
can tarry here no longer. Fare thee well. I didn't really understand him, but I think he's returned to his room. It seems he's unaware of what's happened to Mr. Natsume, so he can't really help us. With Sosaki-san and that man as lodgers, the Garadub house is certainly full of eccentrics. Anyway, I'll go and find a carriage. Yes, I'm sure Mr. Natsume is eagerly waiting our return. Let's hope we can get to the prison before visiting hours are over. Man, I kinda wanna take a break, my throat hurts! Yeah, 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 Jill. Ah, I forgot his accent. Oh, it's you! You're here! You came! Locum to Mr. Nadahoto Esquire! Sore toast. <laughs> Tired toast, uh. I can't believe you came back! I'm so touched! <laughs> We're so sorry to have kept you waiting, Mr. Natsume. Oh, no! Think of nothing of it! R relax! <laughs> Oh hey, it's the guy that Jelly loves seeing frightened. I know, I love it. <laughs> Look at his face! He looks so distressed. <gasps> if, if I were a cat, I would purr with pleasure at the company of such fine compatriots. Noble, nurturing, never failing, Nipponese! Oh, now let's not get carried away. Oh, I quite agree. There's nothing more reassuring than the familiarity of one's native land. Who is this? On the other hand... Oh, it's... <laughs> it is through friendship transcending international borders that one truly appreciates the facts. <laughs> Such is my belief, at least. Ah, oh, oh, it's... yes, ah, it's... it's you! The miserable, rotten spy, Herlock Sholmes! Mr. Scholes, what are you doing here? I have no intention of doing anything, per se. Save observing, of course. Whatever do you mean, Mr. Scholes? Well, having encountered some curious reading material in that gloomful room, and having at the mask the secret identity of that eccentric pair, I decided I should drop in on my way home to see how our divested friend is faring. Gloomful room? At least your accommodations here offers a window, my dear fellow. In that sense, it is a superior option. Anyway, I must commend you on your taste of books. My day has been a delight and cost me not a penny. Ah, uh, you! How dare you! Herlock Sholmes! Ugh. I've had it. I'm through. I'm at the end of my rope. I should never have come to Great Britain. It was a terrible mistake. Haunted by spirits in those accursed lodgings. No doubt my luck will be cursed in tomorrow's trial as well. My whole life has been damned! What are you thinking, Mr. Nadahodo? He mentioned that once before, didn't he? That his lodgings were cursed, I mean. How is he hearing voices from the walls? And there's much truth in Mr. Mustache's words. What? Cursed is a wholly appropriate description, I would say. For the man's lodgings, and indeed for tomorrow's trial. What's that supposed to mean? Okay, so I have to converse. Cursed trial. Mr. Natsume, what did you mean by what you said just now? About the trial tomorrow being cursed. Oh no, why why are you looking so grave? You're, you're making me nervous. I was just getting carried away, that's all. I didn't mean anything by it. Oh, I see. That's really agitated him. You, you, you don't mean the trial really is cursed tomorrow. Are you referring to the prosecutor? The Reaper of the Bailey? The, the Reaper? Oh no, what do you mean? Please, tell me, summarize it succinctly in 16th station words. Salient, whoops, not sationed. No defendant has ever survived a trial in which the Reaper stands for the prosecution. 
prosecution ever. Oh my goodness, can it really be true? This was a 16 words exactly! Oh, was it? Yesterday, Mr. Naruhuna successfully defended someone against the Reaper. Prostitution, I heard that. No, no, I meant to say prosecution. But then, after the trial was over, the defendant passed away in unusual circumstances. Did you just say prostitution? No, prosecution! Mr. McGilded. What? 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 <laughs> Oh, I am impressed, Mr. Sato. You've an eye for detail. Freudian slip. I'm sorry. <laughs> Actually, the Lord Chief Justice told us. Mr. Sholmes. Surely it can't be that having failed to have the accused convicted. Lord Van Zeeks killed the man himself. I wonder how much your parents hear your voice are pretty loud. You're not loud. I asked them how loud I was and they, they said they just hear muffles like rah, 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 rah. JT only can't fans confirmed. I heard that they're removing um uh sex work from OnlyFans though. But I'm like, that's not the only thing that OnlyFans does. But, uh, I don't know. Oh no, he couldn't have, surely. Ah ha 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 ha! You have some wonderful lotions! They were, but they re it after the backlash. I mean, it's like, if it's between consenting adults, I don't think, I mean, it's consented, you're agreeing to whatever they're selling, so there's nothing wrong with that. As long as they're adults and like of age and you know, not minors. Sorry? The man is a mass murderer, he's a court prosecutor, my dear fellow. Oh, yes. Why, of course he is. Uh, of course he is? Then why are you trying to scare me? It could be said, however, that the real truth about the man is even more t terrifying than your hypothesis. The reason they were removing porn, they claim, because banks wouldn't give them loans. Why, why wouldn't they give loans, huh? JT OnlyFans, photos of Jelly's favorite boys instead. <laughs> from every single game and anime I've ever watched. Here's my favorite boy, Eric, from Dragon Quest XI. Here's my favorite boy, Yuji, from Persona 5. Here's favorite boy, Yuri, from Tales of Vesperia. Uh, sex is a thing banks don't like, but it's a part of life. It's natural. I don't- what? <laughs> I was gonna say Eric and Yuji, but said favorite boys instead, and then you said Eric and Yuji first. <laughs> I'm a mind reader. What on earth do you mean by that? The Reaper. Thanks confirmed to not like reproduction. I know, it's exactly, it's how we reproduce. Like, what? <laughs> Van Zeeks is quite an exceptional man. However, in London courts of law, if they associate with that, then it might hurt their reputation. Oh, oh yeah, true. If it's only mostly primarily, um, perceived as a, a porn site, then yeah, it could be bad. But it's it offers other services too. It depends on what your fans want from you. It's basically like a different kind of Patreon or coffee site. You give goods, people are like, yes, I support this. They give you money. Meh. Exceptional does not equate to winning every case without exception. Ah, that, that's good. Soseki-san looks like he's going to cry tears of joy. As you are no doubt aware, in a British criminal trial, there is both a judge and a jury. The judge officiates be based on the letter of the law, whilst the jury offers public opinion and common sense. It is an excellent system, whereby the defendant's guilt is considered from several points of view. However, public opinion in particular is somewhat easily manipulated. Right. Not to turn this into a porn talk street, but I never understood why people would pay for porn when there's hundreds of free sites out there. Mm. Because I guess, um, I guess it's like difference in quality. Like if you watch movies in movie theater, it's like produced by a studio. It's got like directors, people who've worked on films, so they know how to develop a good story. As opposed to just watching an indie film, maybe not as good quality, camera work, um, story, direction. 
So maybe it's like that with porn too. Some of it has more like tasteful stories that people like to get into. Otherwise, it's just like, hey, free stuff, but it's not as great. I I don't know. Maybe it's that. Chase Bank funds porn site OnlyFans skeevy uh, endeavors. Huh? Wait, funds porn site OnlyFans skeevy. Oh, okay. Kinks? I have a kink in my back. But I'm. <laughs> Criminals and corrupt lawyers, for that matter, can use it to their advantage. By any means at their disposal. Contriving evidence, calling imposters and witnesses, and so on. Headline that came out. Oh, okay. That's a very wordy headline that doesn't really flow well. You truly are kinky toes. <laughs> I think that's kink. <laughs> Posture tech, thank you. By such underhand means, those who would want a... Uh, those who would want to are able to sway the jury. Which means that even in the light of irrefutable evidence, the prosecution can't fail. <laughs> thank you for the posture check, Kirby. And thank you for the hugs! Beep. But it means the wrong verdict can be passed. And sadly it is from time to time, my dear madam. It is simply the reality of the situation. And that's alright. However... Those indicted by Lord Van Zeeks cannot escape justice. Their fate is sealed. Oh my. Through the adjudication may leave them may see them leave the courtroom with their freedom. Within months, they all disappear. It is most striking. Disappear? But but how? Ah, by all manner of misfortune, sir. Perhaps they are trampled under a passing carriage. Perhaps they fall into the Thames and drown. Perhaps they are suddenly overcome by raging fever, or perhaps attacked by highwaymen. Oh no no no! All examples of the reality of events here in London, I'm afraid, Mr. Nadahudo. I knew it. I'm... A dead, dodo, duffo, doomed! The cursed lodgings. I feel like after I finish investigating him, it'll be like time for a break because then the trial starts. So let's see how far this goes. When you said a cursed lodgings before, you were referring to your room at Mr. Garadup's house, I, ass I assume. Do you mean to say that you believe the place is cursed? It's been a year now since I came- Okay, it's been a year since he came to Great Britain, but a week since he moved into Mr. Garadup's house. A cliffhanger. Dun, 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 dun. You're going to keep going? It's been two hours. I really want to finish this in investigation before I end. So I'm just going to see how, how long it goes. It's been a year now since I came to Great Britain. But I'd only be in London a week before I started to notice strange feelings in myself. That didn't take long then. Everywhere I looked, there were foreign faces staring at me, laughing behind my back. I, I was sure people were talking at me. I started to become nervous about going outside. They were always staring at me, all the time, from dawn till dusk. So I shut myself away in my room, but even that didn't help. The fear wouldn't go away. You must have been very lonely, haven't been away from your homeland for such a long time. I've had to move a number of times, most recently to that room on Briar Road a week ago now. Yes, why did you choose there? It seems a little inconvenient. The rent is cheap. I have so little money. It appealed to me straight away. Of course, I asked why it was so affordable. Shut myself up in my room, relatable for the past 1.5 years. So true. At least we have windows. <laughs> Also, get vaccinated, everyone. Yes, please get vaccinated. Just do it. Don't let any more variant strains come up. Please. The landlord just simpered and said, The room is cursed. Oops. <laughs> he quickly tried to cover his mistake, but it was too late, so I told him. If you have something to say, then say it. But if not, don't mention it in the first place. I got vaccinated two months ago. Woo, woo, woo. I got vaccinated in April. Yes, well said. 
but it was true. It was all true. You mean the room really is cursed then? Ever since I moved into that windowless hellhole. My sleep has been plagued with nightmares. I awake feeling as though I'm being choked to death. Pfizer, March, think we're supposed to get third booster shot like six months later or something like that? Is anything gonna happen? Or eight? Yeah, I heard that booster shot's supposed to happen, but I need to know when so I could go get it. And what do you mean, Regal, is anything gonna happen? Do you mean in the game? In my waking hours, people are stabbed in front of me as I walk down the street. I'm branded a killer, thrown in prison. Nobody wants to know me. I'm, I'm... Surrounded by scary, sinister spirits! If only there was someone, just one person on my side. Can no one find it in his or her heart to believe in me? Really, no one at all. To believe? Yes, to believe. I believe in you! Um, Mr. Sholmes? Ah, oh, me, Mr. Nadahodo? Pray, what can I do for you? It's about the case on the SS Buria, if you recall. The Buria, the Buria. Ah, that case, the one with the snake. <laughs> He's very hung up on the snake. Well, yes. At that time, I was a suspect, but you believed in me and listened to my side of the story. He didn't believe in you, he kept you in shackles. And you helped us to investigate. I did, did I? Interesting. Nothing has happened. Where? What I want to know is, why? Why did you believe in me? I see, yes. You mean... Because you are a grimly dressed, shady Eastern fellow who found with the victim in a locked room. Shady Isabel, that's racist. <laughs> um, well, if you like, yes. I'm a little surprised that the answer requires explanation, my dear fellow. Oh, in game, nothing has happened. Well, yeah, because right now is all the talking part, so we have to get through it. Uh, JT, you got lucky polar bear event ended yesterday? No, I thought the moon fair event ended, um, today. Does it not? I think everyone in this game is a little racist. It's quite simple, really. You said I didn't do it. But I could have been lying. Surely you must have had your doubts. You must have had suspected me a little. Though I don't blame them for being wary of foreigners in general. True, this is when they were first starting to like become more like global. So of course they're like wary against people that they're not used to. Oh, it ended this morning. Oh, damn, I got lucky then. Thank you for telling me about the polar bear. 13 hours ago. Oh, damn. I think perhaps you have misunderstood. I neither recall believing in you, nor in that which you were telling me. What? You see, the only things I believe in are those I choose to believe in. What? What do you mean, Mr. Sholmes? Jelly couldn't bear to miss that, but I'm sure. <laughs> I make up my own mind about what is to be believed and what is not. If I should like to believe in something, I do. The circumstances can hang as far as I am concerned. But I could have betrayed your trust. Ah, 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 ah. In that case, I should have made an elementary error of judgment, nothing more. Betrayal of trust is an overused excuse, in my opinion. Meaning? Whether or not one should trust another is, in the final analysis, down to oneself. It is a matter of whether or not one can trust oneself. Yes, yes, he's right! He's right! Welcome student Mr. Nanohoro Esquire! <sighs> whether or not I can believe myself. Kazuma! A defense lawyer is only as good as a faith in his clients. And that comes down to how much faith he has in himself. Kazuma, I love you! <laughs> You're so right, Kazuma.
gotta put Kazuma and Jelly's only fist. <laughs> you know what? I think maybe one day I'll just make random videos and put it up on YouTube, like of all the games I've played and like ranking boys and girls from like prettiest to least prettiest. Maybe I'll try that. <laughs> hey Monkeys, good morning. Happy Thursday, Friday, wherever you are. Well, my dear fellows, it is time we were leaving, I believe. Already? Visiting hours are over. The guard will be here shortly to escort us out. Lusty toast. I mean, with the way I'm always excited about swimsuit in Tails games, come on. <laughs> There's a restaurant near here that serves excellent trout. Would you care to join me? The real challenge would be ranking your favorite boys from games anyways. <gasps> But honestly, I think my top two spots are taken by Akihiko Sanada from Persona 3 and um, Daichi Sawamura from Haikyuu. Those are my top. And then right close after that is Vincent Valentine from Final Fantasy VII. And then after that, it would be really hard to rank them. Oh dear, there's never enough time, is there? Top Tales boys. Ooh, Top Tales boys! Well, I want to play more Tales games before I rank all the top Tales boys. But number one is Yuri. Number two, probably Flynn. <laughs> Last is what's his face. Oh, what's his face? Not Carol. It's either, oh, uh, what's his face? The other small kid. Small kidded, um, Symphonia or Asbel from Graces. I'm gonna start for Spiria this weekend, so happy I got it for ten dollars. Yes, Alex, have fun with it. Uh Mr. Natsume, if you'd like, in the trial tomorrow. I'd be happy to represent you. <laughs> oh I I Locum student Mr. Naruhoto Esquire! As I said, I only experienced the British courtroom for the first time yesterday. And although the man I was representing was found not guilty, I lost sight of something crucial. S something crucial? What to believe in? The defendant? Justice? Or the truth? How to believe, even? But, I think I finally worked it out. I decided I must believe in myself above all else, to trust my instincts. Yes, Mr. Naruhodo, that doesn't really solve anything, but okay. And my instincts are telling me that you, Mr. Natsume, are innocent of this crime. And it's imperative that we prove that in court. Locum student, Mr. Naruhodo Esquire! I will fight for your innocence until the bitter end with every weapon available to me. So I hope you'll permit me to represent you tomorrow. But what do the two new guys have to do with the case? Will they be introduced in this case, or will they be introduced in the next one? As I said when we first met, I'd like to entrust my fate to someone who will listen to me in my native tongue. Of course, Mr. Natsume. It would be fair to say, Mr. Naruhodo, that your mind was, in many ways, made up from the outset. You merely needed the events of today to fully realize it. Yes, I think you're right about that. It's been a roundabout journey, but I got there in the end. Why is it showing these two? Mr. Sato. Yes? Would you be willing to stand by my side tomorrow and help me in court? Absolutely. As I said this morning, you may consider me your personal judicial assistant. The shocking events of yesterday's trial still weigh heavily on my mind. But it's time to stop looking backwards. Kazuma believed in me, and Mr. Sholmes believes in me now too. I don't think he does, but whatever. So it's time. Time that I learn to believe in myself. Sosekisan san has no one, he's all alone, so it's my job to help him, to fight his corner. Tomorrow, 
in the courtroom with all the strength I can muster. To, to be continued! Ah, oh, completed! I still have to download the, new, the Smash DLC characters. Oh, I haven't done that in so long. Ah, oh, but finally, we are at the trial. So next week, hopefully I'll get back to um, doing Tuesday, Thursday streams. So yeah, we'll start the trial next time. This case is long. I hope the trial isn't like super long. I hope it isn't trial and then break for investigation and then trial again, just. Just do the trial. Is it cool if we raid my friend who's doing a 24 hour stream? Sure. What's their channel name? May I help to? Ha ha ha. Oops, that's hey. May I help to? Okay. Gonna stream this person. Streaming Alan Wake. So thank you for the hugs and posture check. She's cool people. She's a big persona fan as well. Awesome. Well, this is it for me tonight. Um, I'm going to rest my voice and yeah, chill. But thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Stay toasty, have a good night, have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Start raid.